Hi, everybody. This is Coach Allison. I have your week 22 Defy Aging to review with you. All right, this week we are going to go back to a drop set. We haven't had this in a while. So what we're going to do is have five exercises. And you're going to be working in your own space this week and at your own pace. So you will have to sort of be on top of counting your own reps. It's going to be a 25-minute max for this routine. So you either work for 25 minutes or you work until you are done with the complete set. And um, if you finish the complete set and there's still some time left over and others are still working, what you're going to do to take up the rest of the time is hop on a piece of cardio equipment and just do a nice steady state cardio uh, while your other teammates are completing it or that 25 minutes is up. So what we're going to do in that 25 minutes of time is, again, it's called a drop set. We start at 10 reps each of those five exercises. So you go through all the exercises, complete 10 reps, then you start back at the top of the list. And now we do nine reps, complete everything for nine reps. And you could probably guess where we're going here. We, it's called a drop set. Then we do eight reps, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Again, only five exercises. Get my thumb in there, or it looks like four. But uh, again, it does end up kind of being a lot of reps total because we go from 10 down to one. So let's review all of those five exercises. Exercise one is a push-up with a toe tap. So I'm going to do this on an incline because I think my shoulder will be okay. I do have a chronic shoulder. Probably it will be lifelong at this point. Shoulder injury. I can't do a full push-up on my toes on the floor because of my shoulder injury. So you can do this on your toes on the floor. You can do this on an incline. I have something relatively low here. You can pick something higher. You can do it against a wall. You can do any sort of elevation you like you do one ooh this might not work on my shoulder let's try it ow you can do you do one push up then you tap each toe to the side that's one rep do another one tap tap that's two that's how you count that okay you can also do this on the knees but the knee version is a little tricksy so let's go through what the knee version looks like cuz you do you do the push up on your knee but then you do have to pop up to your toes yeah, I'll show you. I can't do knee push-ups. So, so, okay. So again, if you're doing a knee push-up, a knee push-up is not this with your butt staying in the air and just bringing your face to the floor. So remember, you bring your hips down and you do the full torso bringing down to the floor. So if you're doing a knee version, you do your one push-up and you pop up to the toes, tap, tap, knees back down, push-up. Just because the tap out to the side with the knees is extremely uncomfortable on the knees because when you're bringing that one knee out, it puts a lot of pressure on that other knee. You can try it if you like, but really I, I found it just gets very sloppy and it's very uncomfortable. So kind of a lot of options there. <laughs> um, try a few options, do the one that works best for you. Um, yeah, work with your coach to come up with a good creative solution for what works best for you. But again, that incline is a great option, but that is our push up with the toe taps. Exercise two, an alternating band back row. So you've got a band, you're going to step on it. You need to cross the band like so to create enough tension. Um, you come into that forward bend, 45 degrees forward. So showing you from the side, it's not simply just kind of folding down with poor posture like this, but it's keeping your back and spine flat, popping those hips back. So you know, my spine is nice and flat as opposed to rounded like this. So that is our body position. Palms are turned inward, so neutral grip as opposed to palms turned back. And we're gonna alternate a row, pulling up and back, kind of like you're bringing that elbow back and trying to tuck it into your spine. Okay, so we're not flaring it way out. And notice how I'm kind of turning and twisting my, um, my body into that pull, into that direction. That's how you really squeeze into that correct um, side back muscle right here. So this, the count is each side separate. So it would be counted one, one, two, two, and so on, okay? Step your feet nice and wide to create a little more tension there. Make sure you pick a resistance band that's firm enough because um, your back, it'd be different than a band that you're doing a curl with because your back is a really strong group of uh, muscles. So pick a nice firm band. That's our alternating band back row. Kettlebell squat to deadlift. And this one's kind of, I kind of, try to pull one over on you with this because it's kind of two exercises in one. Uh, 
And the coordination is a little tricky because you do have to continually switch your body position to go from a deadlift to a squat alternating. So a deadlift, uh, many of you know, <clears throat> if you've been with us for a while, it's kind of working all these back muscles here, hamstrings, glutes, lower back, soft bend in the knees. You're hinging at your hips. Again, kind of that same body position as getting into that forward fold for the back row. Keep the spine nice and straight. Pop those hips back. The kettlebell should be going straight down, not forward. So if your kettlebell ends up out here, that means you're rounding your upper back too much and you're simply leaning forward. But instead you keep those shoulders down, don't round your upper back, pop your hips back, that kettlebell should simply go straight down. So watch my kettlebell, it's going straight down as opposed to coming forward. Some of the mirrors are very helpful, so please do these always in front of the mirrors. So we do one deadlift, then we go into one squat. A squat is a knee bend, so kettlebell still goes straight down, but now we're doing the bent knees. We're trying to sit into an imaginary chair. So that's one rep. Doing those two combined is one rep. So deadlift. Squat, that's one. Deadlift, squat, that's two. The deadlift, you should feel more back here. The squat, you should feel more here, okay? So that one might take some practice. Your coach can help you with that, but that is the deadlift kettlebell, deadlift to squat. Next one is a kneeling Arnold press, okay? The kneeling refers to our body position. As you can see, I'm on my knees. So I wanna make sure we're not doing things like leaning back, kind of slouching forward, nice and tall. Already we're having to engage some core muscles to keep this nice tall posture, not doing any of the slouching, leaning, tilting. So it's the shoulder exercise. Many of you are familiar with our shoulder press because of the body position and the Arnold press, which I'm gonna show you in a second. I suggest going lighter than you would go for a typical shoulder press. I'll say it again go lighter than you would typically go for a normal shoulder press. So the Arnold press adds a little pizzazz to a shoulder press. So normal press first, up, down. When you're in this down position, we do a 180 rotation. See how I was here? And I rotated those weights 180 degrees. And then I come back to the start. So up, down, 180 degrees, they can touch lightly in the middle. Don't slam them together though. So I want you to really keep, you do this in front of a mirror too. We don't want those arms to be all the way down and just doing this. Nothing is happening here. No engagement of the shoulders or chest. All you're doing is spinning, spinning your hands. I mean, this looks cute. It's, you know, maybe a cheerleader move, but so that's why you want to stop when the weights are about at your chin, maybe between your ears and your chin, not down here at your shoulders. That's when you rotate forward. If you're doing it at that level and you do that rotation in front of you here, not just like right here, your front of your shoulder, like I'm poking my shoulder right now, it's really solid. And your chest, your pec muscle are highly engaged. But if you do it down here when they're disengaged, again, all you're doing is spinning and twirling your wrist. Big difference between this and actually rotating your arm in. I really hope you can see that difference, okay? That's what we're trying to do. So I will show you a couple the correct way. See my whole entire arm, for the most part, comes around. Now I'll show you a couple the way that we don't wanna see. Okay, so I think I've made myself as clear as I can make that. How your coaches will watch you and help you. If, if you're unable to be on those knees, the mats will feel good, so definitely use a mat. We can turn this into a standing Arnold press. No biggie. Take yourself off those knees if needed. So the kneeling is definitely a progression of an, a traditional Arnold press. So that's our kneeling Arnold press. Our final one is a band zigzag hop over. So we're simply using the bands because they're pretty mobile. You can take them to your station. And we already had them out for our band rows, right? And it, so 
the reason it's important to use the band and not do just the jumps without anything is because it's teaching us how to jump over something. So it's forcing us to have to jump over something to practice that agility and picking up the feet. Okay, so I want you to definitely use, try to use the bands. Zigzag, it's a double foot jump and the count is total. So 10 jumps total, doesn't matter how many you do each direction left and right. So I'm gonna start on one side at one far end. I'm gonna jump over, that's one. As I'm jumping side to side, I'm also going forward. That's two, three, four. When you get to the end, you can turn around and go forward again. If you'd like an added challenge, you can attempt to go backwards. Now I'm gonna jump back, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So that would be my 10 round, okay? To take a little, take down the challenge level, take down the impact a little, you can turn it into a single foot hop over. So we can lead with one leg. That would be your alternative to both reduce the impact. So that would take off some of the jarring of the knees and ankles. Um, so that would be your other alternative option for that one. Okay, and our team builder is going to be a bicep burnout. So it's going to end up being 30 curls, three different kinds, three different styles. So I recommend grabbing a weight that's pretty significantly lighter than what you could maybe do one set of 30 seconds or one set of 12. Because again, it's going to be 30, 30 curls. <laughs> We're going to do 10 wide curls. A wide curl is take those um, by, uh, dumbbells, <laughs> turn them forward like a normal curl, but then turn them just a little outward. So at the top of a curl, you should be forming kind of a W. See how I'm kind of making a W? <laughs> That's a wide curl. Don't go excessively, don't go way out here like this. It's just a normal curl with a little wide pattern. So that's our wide curl. We do 10 of those. Shake them out, shake your arms off for just a few seconds. Then we do 10 normal curls. I like to turn my palms in at the bottom for these. It's more comfortable on my arms and shoulders. If you prefer to keep your palms forward, that's fine. Either or, 10 of those, shake the arms out. And then we do 10 hammer curls. Palms stay turned in, okay? So 10 of each, that's a total of 30. That's our team builder, bicep burnout. All right, team. So that's week 22. I hope you enjoy this kind of drop set. We'll see you back next week for week 23. <laughs>